okay, we all know what you came here for. It's to see the two looks I did with the new Nomad palette. And so you can hear my review on this palette if you should get it. See some comparisons. So let's get into it. If you guys are new to my channel, if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Karen Harris. I like film tan girl friendly makeup videos here on YouTube. I do love Nomad and I have so many of their palettes. So if you like eyeshadow palette videos, this is definitely one of the places you should be subscribed to. Don't forget to hit that bell so you're notified every time I post. And without further blabbering, let's get into it. Okay, you guys, the Fuji Five Lakes palette is here. And for the first time, this is so embarrassing. I don't know why. I was like, let me look up Mount Fuji. I knew, I knew it was in Japan, but I was like, I feel like I don't know anything about it. So I looked it up and I'm like, oh, that's so cool. So there's a lot of information out there and a lot of the pictures I saw definitely had this type of color story. So I feel like they nailed it. I have close-ups, I have swatches. So let's get into that and let me tell you a little bit about this palette. Autumn in Japan is a colorful and captivating season. As foliage hues move across the country, the favorite pastime begins. And no other place is more beautiful and more awe-inspiring to see the brilliant fall hues than the Fuji Five Lakes region. The iconic snow-capped Mount Fuji is mirrored in calm lake waters, while the warm-hued autumn leaves create the perfect frame to capture this region's spectacular beauty. This palette really is a canvas of warm and cool. The outside artwork is with Mount Fuji and Lake Kawaguchi? framed by textured leaves. Inside the scene continues with fiery red maples, golden gingos, and other octnomal <laughs> shades framing the cool mountain grays and lake blues with diamond fuji at the pinnacle. Nine vivid mattes and six luminescent shimmers. The cause for this palette is more trees, forest conservation organization, whose goal is a society where forest and people can coexist for generations to come. So I really love this. I really love this palette. I definitely was so curious how they were going to make this different from Hudson Valley. And I think they nailed it. It's definitely a palette of primary colors. And you definitely see that in the swatches, but it's also very versatile. And I'm going to show you two looks with it today, and I feel like it's going to give you a lot of inspiration on what you can do with this palette. I also want to say I'm so sorry. I'm in the basement. I'm downstairs. My husband and his mom are playing VR in his office next to mine, and I can, like, hear them, and I'm sure my mic's going to pick it up. So I'm so sorry, but today is the only day I have this week to get this done, and I really want to have two looks ready by the time this palette is revealed. So bear with me i am so sorry it's also 9 30 at night but you know it is what it is so i always like to do two looks for you guys one is more colorful and a little bit more unexpected i would like to say and then the second look is going to be a more wearable i hate that word a more neutral look i guess just so you guys can see like the options so let's go ahead and get into the first look. I'm going to start off with this really pretty shade called Mount Fuji. And that's going to go on the inner part of the crease as well as the lid. This is such a pretty icy blue shade. It almost looks like it's white. So it's absolutely stunning. Okay, I really like how that's looking. Now I'm going to keep the same brush and I'm going to go into this shade called Burning Bush. It's a really pretty mid-tone red. And I'm going to just kind of start that on the outer corner and slowly blend it into the lid as well. I'm kind of trying to do something different with the colors. I don't want to do just the kind of yellow and red look. So I thought I would take inspiration from the packaging and how like this beautiful mountain has the blues and then the foliage. So we'll see if it turns out as expected. 
So I'm just having way too much fun blending with this big old brush. And yeah, just trying to keep it kind of at an angle. Okay, that is looking so awesome. I really love it. Now I am going to deepen up the outer corner a little bit more, but I really want to use the shade called Diamond Fuji. It's such a pretty iridescent blue, and that's definitely going to be the shimmery shade on the lid. Okay, I was struck with some inspiration. I'm actually going to use the shade Fiery Maple on the portion of the lid that has, oh gosh, I picked up a lot of the red matte, and I'll put the blue on the more icy portion. That's so pretty, oh my gosh. My husband's handling bedtime today and I can hear the older one. <laughs> she is crying about something. So if you hear her, I promise you she's fine. It's just not easy being two, okay? It sucks. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take the same brush. I just cleaned it off with my Sigma Switch. Pick up Diamond Fuji, and I'm just going to put that on. Oh, that's cute. Does that look too subtle? I'm like really hoping it looks fierce. Okay, I used a shade called Rich Brown from Melt in the Waterline. I'm going to take this little blending brush from Fantasy Cosmetica and go into Burning Bush, which is the red. And I'm just going to take that brush and I'm just going to run that red on the outer corner and bring it up to the outer corner of the eye as well. This is like a really nice little blending brush for the lower lash line. It's like big, so it does like move really nicely, but it's not too big, like it's a really good size. It's basically like precise enough to be dramatic, but it's also not like hard to control. So I kind of love that about it, just going in little windshield wiper motions on most of the outer corner there. And I kind of want it to be a little messy, not super duper precise in the outer corner of this look. Okay, so I'm gonna go into this like burgundy shade that's in this palette and I'm gonna use that on the very outer edge of the lid. I'm gonna see if that's gonna help kind of deepen things up a little bit. Okay, I feel like it could be a little bit more amped up. So I'm gonna go into the shade called Mont Hoya. And this is like a tealy color, so I might regret it, but I kind of just wanna use it almost like I would a black. And I'm just gonna try to place it on the outer edge and really blend it into the red so that it turns into like a dark dark red and doesn't really remain a teal so I'll just layer some of that burgundy on top to give it that extra drama okay so far so good and then I'm just gonna clean off this little blender on my Sigma switch and I'm gonna go into Mount Fuji I'm just gonna build that little light, light blue shade back up again. See, I feel like this kind of color really could use a base with my skin tone because it just gets eaten right up <laughs> with my skin color. Hopefully it looks nice and contrasty and I'm just gonna add a little bit more of the shimmer. I'm just gonna take the shade Red Rowan which is basically like a skin tone shade and just kind of help blend the outer corner of it with that big fat brush. But overall, I think it turned out pretty cool, pretty dramatic, hopefully quite different. So I'm gonna go ahead 
and finish up this look, throw on some mascara, do something with this hair, and I'll be right back to show you guys the finished look and tell you what else is on my face today. Okay friends, so here is the more colorful, more out there look with the Fuji palette. Now let me go ahead and tell you guys what else is on my face in case you want to recreate the vibes. I'm like totally living for this, especially this cheek. So let me tell you really quick. I did pull out this Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydro Glow Foundation. I figured I should wear it more because I haven't been reaching for this too much. So this is the shade 3N40 in case you were wondering. And then for bronzer today, I did switch it up. For my liquid bronzer, I'm wearing the Glossier Cloud Paint in the shade Swept. This is definitely a little light, but I like to use these as a base. So I did go on top of this with the Juvia's Place bronzer. This is in the shade Tan, and I usually only just use this top shade. So kind of using a mix of oldies and some newer products that I want to use more, and some tried and true. This is a new to me product, but it is a quick favorite. This is the L'Oreal Lumi Blushes. This is in the shade, it has a sassy name. What is it? Oh, here it is. It's Glowy Worth It Medium. It is the most stunning red blush and it has that sheen to it. It's an amazing liquid blush from the drugstore. Highly recommend checking it out. And then for highlighter, I had to go with Cleona. This is the shade Bitter. So pretty. I have it on the cheekbones as well as a little bit on my nose. So I look a little bit like, I don't know, I feel like a fall leaf, I guess I should say. But this is such a pretty color. I love the Cleona Fruit Lighters. And then I have the Natasha Denona Concealer on. This lip shade is a combo of two. So I'm wearing the Anastasia Beverly Hills lipstick in the shade Parchment. This is such a pretty terracotta shade. And I decided to top it with this lip oil from Clarence that they recently sent me. So that is the lip combo. And then I also have the What's Up Beauty Primer on today. This is the Positivity Primer. So I just wanted to mention, I believe this launched yesterday, if you guys are interested in picking that up. So that is everything that's on my face. We're going to move on to the more everyday look with this palette. So let's go ahead and get into that. So I've been just trying to think of ways to make my videos a little bit more interesting instead of just kind of doing the most colorful looks I can think of every time. I thought it would be nice to kind of show you guys more options in my head because like not everybody is going to do a blue and red eyeshadow look in their day to day and hopefully that is useful to you guys but I totally see just like the most beautiful like neutrally look with this palette as well so I thought it would be fun to create that. I have to use this shade called Burnish Beach. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. So I'm taking a Sigma, I think this is an E, oh it's an E24. It's a little smaller than an E25 and this is going to be my crease color. Okay, so next for the lid shade, I'm going to use this one called Pompous Grass. It's a beautiful neutral color, and we're just going to put that all over the lid. Now, if you wanted to keep it really simple, you could just stop here. This could be an everyday look, like if you want to wear this makeup to the office, or just when you're running errands, two quick shades, one in the crease, one on the eyelid. This is a neutrally kind of sheer champagne color so I thought that would be beautiful. You could also do this matte shade with this beautiful yellow called Golden Ginkgo Go. Sorry I think I totally just butchered that but it has a beautiful like blue sheen to it. So it is a duochrome kind of shade. It has some shifts to it but otherwise if you want to do something very quick and easy something like this with a bit of eyeliner and mascara would be perfect. Now I have this tendency to want to deepen up every eye look I do so I want to put in a little bit of this shade called Moji Moiji right here and I think this is a good alternate to use instead of a brown shade now this palette doesn't have a brown shade so I think 
this would be the best option. Or you could do the blue if you're feeling a little bit extra called Mount Hoi. I did use these mattes already in my first look. Um, but this would be a good way to just kind of deepen things up, make the look a little bit more fall-esque as well. So, yeah, I just thought it would be interesting and fun to kind of show you guys those quick options for looks that you can just kind of do quick and easy. And I just love this color combo. It's so fall. I'm not excited for it to be fall because it's so cold here. Like, it's ridiculous. We did have a really good winter, though. So I guess I can't complain about last winter. But I feel like the prediction is that this winter is going to be rough. So I feel like I'm already, like, clenching my butt a little bit over that. But... I have my eyebrows done. I got them done today. I got my nails done because we're doing family pictures with my in-laws while they're here. And so I just wanted to look, you know, a little extra. But this is so cute in my opinion. And I could keep deepening up if I wanted to. I could also add fiery maple to the outer portion of the eyelid to add more shimmer. I also think that you could do this shade in the lower lash line to add a pop of color that way. So those are some options. Now let me just line the waterline quick and let's see what I decide to do with my lower lash line. If I'm going to go with the theme or if I'm going to add the blue. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. This eye pencil is broken but I made it work. These are from Marc Jacobs and this is the shade Glam Jam. I've had this forever. Okay so since I did red you guys know I guess I'm going to do kind of a monochromatic vibe. I figured since the other look was a little bit more colorful I wanted to tone it down for this time around. So I'm just going to grab a little pencil brush from Sigma. And I'm going to go into this shade called Burning Bush. It's like a really pretty red. And of course, I'm going to run that on the lower lash line. Oh, I just love how reds blend. Sorry, I don't know why I always make a weird face. I'm going to work in my lower lash line. But anyways, okay, really like how this is looking. And then I'm going to take the shade called Golden Ginkgo. Ginkgo? I'm so sorry. I should be looking up how to say these words. But I just want to film and get back upstairs. And I got to put groceries away and clean the kitchen up <laughs> oh my gosh i swear i am like the opposite of aspirational influencers people are always like i'm going to bali on a trip with my husband and i am just like guys my in-laws are here and they're driving me crazy <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of influencing I'm doing today. Okay, so I had to throw in a little bit of golden Ging Kong, Ging Kong, sorry, I'm making this worse. The yellowy shade, a little bit on the brow bone, inner corner. Look is done, so I'm going to go ahead and spray my face, throw on some mascara, and try out some new products that I bought. And I'll be right back to show you guys the finished look. Okay, friends. So here is the finished look. What do you guys think? Definitely let me know which one is your favorite look. Leave me a red and blue heart emoji if you like the first one. And leave a leaf emoji if you like this one. I always love to know if you guys have a favorite look from the ones I create in each video. Now, let me go ahead and tell you really quick what else is on my face today in case you want to shop your stash to create this look. I have the same foundation on as last night. 
I just want to try this out and use it up a little more. So it's the HD Skin Hydro Glow Foundation from Makeup Forever. For concealer, I have on the Laura Mercier concealer. Bronzer is this new one from Ilia. I have the shade Rise on. For blush today, I have on Sundress Season from Fenty. I did create a quick reel with my first impressions on these blushes. So I will post that on my Instagram soon for you guys. Since I used a Fenty blush, I decided to use Yum Rum as well from Fenty. And the lip shade I have on today is Body Heat from NARS, and these are their new explicit lipsticks. Okay, so let's do a little bit of housekeeping first. Now for spooky season, Nomad is bringing back their two Halloween launches from, I think, is this last year and the year before? I'm not 100% sure, but either which way, I just wanted to show you guys really quick how beautiful these are. So this is Ghost Town USA. I think this was last year's palette. And then we have Haunted Europe, which was from the previous season. And I love these because they're just like these epic palettes of gorgeous neutrals and like cool tone shades. So if you just look at them, you'll see one is a little bit more vibrant. This one's definitely part of that like cool tone trend that we're seeing even in 2024. So yeah, these are stunning and they're going to come back. So keep an eye out. I think I saw that there's going to be a bundle as well if you want to pick up both. I know I've already seen people commenting on my new makeup releases videos and stuff saying they regret not purchasing like Ghost Town USA. So if you want to do that, I just wanted to show you guys those two palettes and let you know they're coming back. So make sure you're saving your money. And then I, of course, had to pull out my Hudson Valley palette. I can't believe this one came out like two years ago. I was clearing up my hard drive and I found the video that I posted about this palette in 2022. So this is the beautiful Hudson Valley palette and I love it. As you can see, it has those beautiful fall shades. And in my mind, when I saw Nomad like starting to sneak peek the palette, I was like, what are they gonna do that's fall that isn't gonna look like this palette? And I feel like they really nailed it because Fuji does have some of those beautiful reds and yellows, but I love the inclusion of those icy colors. I feel like these palettes would pair so well together, but if you're a fall gal and you are worried about the Fuji palette being too similar to the Hudson Valley palette, I'm here to tell you I don't think that is the case at all, but I could see these working really well together as well. Now I wish I had done a third look and worn these two palettes together. But unfortunately, I don't have all the time in the world to do that. But this is so, so cute. So just wanted to show you guys a few comparisons with some of the palettes from Nomad that I already have. Now, just a little bit of the launch information. This palette will launch at 11 p.m. on Monday night, Central Time. That is midnight Eastern Time. So it feels like you're getting it a little bit early if you're on Central Time. So either which way, you can buy it on the Nomad website. I am a Nomad affiliate, so I do have a discount code with them. It's KH Makeup. If you want to use it, you sure can. I do make a small commission, but it is at no extra cost to you, and I'm super grateful. Anytime you guys use my links and codes to shop, just want to let you know that. I am so excited about this palette, if you couldn't already tell. I think this is the most beautiful packaging. First of all, let's talk about the packaging that Nomad has done. I mean, they always seem to, like really bump up the packaging and create things that are different and new and I think this is so cool. This palette has texture to it in case you can't tell in the video but it has like dimension so you can feel it and it feels like you're almost touching like a canvas and this is like an oil painting so it's honestly like a beautiful work of art. If you like to display your palettes you might really really love to display this one because it's so stunning and on the inside it doesn't disappoint either these shades are so pretty i like to call this like a primary color palette because when i swatched it i was like wow this is literally red yellow and blue and it's so fun to see how they took these three shades and really expanded it and made it into such an interesting color story I just feel like my mind is blown that this is a fall palette, but they were able to incorporate blues and this beautiful iridescent shade. So I think they really nailed it. I had so much fun creating two different looks. Like I said, I just want to show you guys like options and the possibilities because I'm not a professional makeup artist. Yes, I've been on YouTube for quite some time and I love creating makeup looks and I love reviewing eyeshadow palettes. 
but I wanted to do something a little bit different in 2024. I feel like people don't really care about the grams and the ounces and the mats and the shimmers and all of the things anymore, but I thought this would be a way to provide some value <laughs> with this video for you guys. And so I would love some feedback on this style of video. Do you like to see a more easy look versus something a little bit more colorful and over the top? I would love your feedback on that. But anyways, I really like this palette. I think the formula is great. The mattes blend like butter and I think the metallics are really beautiful as well. So I'm very excited for Nomad and I'm so excited especially to hear what you guys think because as much as I enjoy trying things out, I love hearing your guys' perspective. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Also, if you have not entered my August monthly giveaway, the link is in the description box. Thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I will see you in another video very, very soon. Bye, friends!